Laura. Our second speaker is Tanya Vihovsky, a social worker here in our community, and she's also on the Rights and Democracy Leadership Committee. Day in and day out, she works with folks who struggle under Big Pharma's influence. She even ran for office just to fight for these people, and she's here to tell us today why this work is so critical. As Julie said, these issues are very interconnected. I'm one of millions of Americans with chronic, with chronic health conditions that require lifelong treatment. One of the most deadly that I live with is anaphylaxis. The fact that I could have a life-threatening reaction at any moment means that I need to always travel with epinephrine in the form of an EpiPen. Some of you may remember three years ago when the pharmaceutical company Mylan suddenly hiked the prices of EpiPens over 400%. Soon after that, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Vermont, represented by MMR, reclassified the medication from a tier one medication that I paid a $10 copay for to a tier three that I had a 50% co-insurance for. And suddenly, one dose of epinephrine cost me over $500. That year, I had 11 anaphylactic reactions. The year after, 17. And so far this year, I've had 11 totaling over $20,000 in EpiPen cost. I have, I have a master's degree and a full-time job and I can't afford this. And if I can't afford this, most of us can't afford this. Right now, every EpiPen in my home is expired. They seem to still work, but what about when they don't or I run out? My life is literally at stake because of a company arbitrarily decided to prioritize their profits over people's lives. I know I'm not alone. Every year, over 500,000 Americans file for bankruptcy due to medical costs. There's no easy way to measure how many people die because of the prohibitive cost of care and medication. We don't know how many lives are lost. I'm a social worker and I see the impacts of this greed every day. I support people who cannot afford their co-pays and so they don't go to the doctor. I support people who ration their medications, hoping that they'll wake up tomorrow. The medical industrial complex in this country accounts for close to 18% of our gross domestic product, at least twice that of any other country. And yet our outcomes are much worse. We have declining life expectancy, high rates of death from preventable illness, and high infant and maternal mortality rates. These are not statistics of a country with the best healthcare system. In fact, these are not statistics of a country that can even claim to have a civilized healthcare system. Here in Vermont, we proudly talk about our low uninsured rates, but what does that matter if people cannot use the coverage that they have? I want all Vermonters to have healthcare, and we cannot attain this if companies like MMR are in that state house lobbying for corporate greed over the need of Vermonters. <laughs> It is far past time that, the, that people come before profits and greed is not the law of this land. Every day I read a story about a young person dying because they are no longer covered through their parents' health care and they can't afford their insulin. Or stories of financial ruin because of illness or injury. Just last night a woman shared her story from Vermont. She became homeless simply because she became sick. And I think of myself sitting in my living room or in the parking lot of the emergency department knowing that I need to be treated for my anaphylaxis, but also knowing that even with my insurance, the visit will cost me thousands of dollars, so I don't go. Next time, I might be one of the casualties of their greed. On their website, MMR states, we are proud to represent great companies and organizations. What great companies are those? They represent pharma the lobbying firm that has spent billions of dollars to ensure Americans cannot afford the health care that they need. They represent CoreCivic, the private prison company responsible for the concentration camps on our nation's southern borders and for providing terrible health care to the prisoners in their private prisons. Yeah. They represent pharmaceutical companies who put their profits ahead of the lives of millions who are now struggling with opioid addictions that they knew were likely and yet they still pressured the providers to prescribe more. This is what they're proud of? It's well past time that we demand better for our people, that we demand action, and that we hold them accountable for all of the people who have suffered needlessly for their greed. We have to come together, and together we can win. All right. Thank you so much for that, Tanya. That was very powerful. Next, we have 350 Vermont Solutions Campaign organizer Jael Polskamp to give a statement on behalf of my